face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome back to another course of Valhalla Pokemon League Battle versus Tid and his Quebec Betics. And yeah, going into the game, I really just want to say this straight off the bat, just going over Tid's team. Um, we actually have 11 members in our draft at the moment, so it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly what's going to come in. However, Tid is one of the captains in Set Lee, which means that his team is, by default, slightly stronger. Uh, so straight off the bat, his um, team is Genesec, Cloyston, Necros, Machandalo, Alolan, Muck, Whimsicott, Glisco, Zerkitry, Mega Blastoise, Gurgur, and Aerodactyl. So, consider what it brought to the table. I'm definitely missing two Pokemon that I definitely thought was going to make it. One of them was Mega Blastoise, which was a tremendous threat towards my team. Uh, the other one was actually Alola Muck. I felt Alola Muck kind of covered uh, all of my special threats really well and pushed it back really easily. So, seeing his team being Glisco, Zerkitry, Whimsicott, Gurgur, Genesis and Cloyster really made this matchup, I would say, easier for me. I definitely had a clear idea what I wanted to do, and I want to do it as early as I could, as I think his strongest threats here are Cloyster and Genesis. Cloyster, primarily, if it is a focus sash variant, uh, this means basically I need to get rocks up the field very early. Other than that, I don't believe any of the others are deemed to be threats towards my team. I myself have Kieran Black, Tabakoku, uh, Kieran Black, I should say, straight off the bat, is a left or set with Roost, uh, Fusion Bolt, and then um, Ice Beam and Earth Power covers his team really nicely. Tabakoku is a Specs variant, um, really standard set for Specs variant. Uh, Jardos, Fly MC, Dragon Dance variant. Syllably is a nasty plot, Hidden Power Fire variant with uh, Grass and Ground Stab. Uh, Sunclean is a Bandit variant with, uh, well, Return. Uh, it hits hard and hits his, all of his team really hard, so I felt that easily was very pasteable to my team. Though, I should say, both Stalt and Gigalith was in and out of the team. Also, Sandslash was there over uh, Stoutland for a, for the longest time, decided against it in, in the last minute. And also, an Aramancho Gigalith being a more specially defensive version with um, Sugarberry to, and Hidden Power Ice to be able to 2 it KO Glisco. It's mainly there to force a Roost on Gliscor to match up against one another, so I get a free switch. But on that Gigalith isn't necessarily that important for the matchup, but it can do a tremendous amount of damage if he has a hard time switching into it. So, really, with all this said, let's of course go into the match. So, I'm going to lead off with my Cure in Black, mainly because it didn't match up against really well against whichever matchup he decides to bring besides Genesec. So, um, Gliscor is his first switch in. Now, I am a bit predictable here. I go directly for the Ice Beam, even though Genesect is and probably are his only really good switch in towards a Cure in Black. So, definitely should have probably predicted there, but didn't do that. As Ice Beam will do a fair chunk, we do score a crit here. Very helpful. This also tells us that Genesect is a more offensive variant. Now, I'll go to Celebi since I don't necessarily have a good switch in towards Genesect. As the Flash kind of does a really, really good chunk of Celebi. Uh, it's not really destructive, but it does a lot, as I'll actually go directly with the Hidden Power Fire, um, and Selby comes in. Now, here's the thing, I actually decided here to go for, um, or what do you call it, um, a nasty plot. Forgetting about U-Turn on Gliscor, I definitely felt that that was probably not what it's going to bring anyway, but definitely forgot about U-Turn when I actually made that decision. As it goes for U-Turn, knocking out Selby, and from the get-go here, I looks really dumb. Um, I definitely would have been much better off just switching in Koku here, so I feel, yeah, that was tough. As uh, so it brings in Genesis yet again, I do get a free switch in here, and my free switch in will be Redentus, my Tabu Koku, and, um, well, I'm pretty free to actually go for a Thunderbolt, since it doesn't necessarily have a Pokemon that are resisted towards that, as uh, Gliscor comes in, well, or I actually want a Bolt switch, but, yeah, the Gliscor is the only Pokemon that can switch into that. Here's what I feel... It was unfortunate that I didn't optimize for a Coal Mine set. I think that would have been better off. As I go to Volt Hall, basically forcing the Gliscor out, I can set up against this Pokemon who decides to stay in. As he goes very easy at Quake. Um, and yeah, I, there is nothing to it. I'm really just going to go directly for Dragon Dances. I'm healthy enough to do pull that off, and I don't fear anything here. Whimsicott comes in, and I didn't necessarily fear this Pokemon, I as I actually go directly here for the Fly MC Bounce. Well, Jokes on me, this is due to 
Nature power here is actually boosted by the um, Prankster ability, which means it turns to be a Thunderbolt and he knocks my Gyarados out. So I'm feeling a bit on the back foot here, as I was definitely surprised about that. And uh, well, Gigalith comes in, there's really nothing Gigalith can do. However, I can get off my rocks, and I intend to do just so. Uh, basically, I I'm still fine. Like, I'm not in a bad spot, I'm just aren't in as good of a spot as I thought I was from the get go. Now, I'll actually decide to bring in my Tab Coco because all of a sudden, uh, Gerda can hit super effectively against my remaining Pokemon, and that is not a good thing. He hits super effectively towards Kyurem, Southland, and Gigalith. So, with that in mind, I really need to make sure that the Gerda is out. The easiest way of doing so is actually spamming with Coco damage. Now, my opponent here will switch out and actually go directly for yet again his Glisco, as I do the obvious play, which being Thunderbolt. Uh, definitely, I could have predicted there, I definitely could that. Um, where's the thing though, since I lost my specs, I can no longer KO him anyway, and I can't risk anything, so I'm just gonna go directly for Southland. Luckily for me, my opponent do go for a defog here, which is definitely helpful, as now I can just start spamming returns, and my opponent of course sees his coming as it brings Russ to Genesect, and um, yeah. I mean, what can I say? I'm in a good spot here to KO him here, though he is stalling for Sandstorm, and that's never a good thing since the Sandstorm do subside. Uh, with that in mind, I'm sadly need to actually reset the sand as a second Vulcan, which probably was a bit of a stretch. I could have played the Stoutland better, but the thing is here, had I stayed in here with Stoutland and KO him, that would have been the girl that would have been able to KO the Stoutland, and I wouldn't necessarily have a good switching towards that. So I'm better off losing Vulcan. Which felt really tough. Uh, definitely felt that Gila could have actually proceeded to be a very effective Pokemon here. I'll leave in that role now to Southland. And, um, well, it doesn't seem as effective now, does it? So, at this point, with 3 for 6, I do get my first KO here. The relief of not being 6 0 is definitely up there. I feel that that's a relaxing feeling, as we can saw far the back foot. Now, here's the thing though Gerda comes in. Gerda can't KO me with a like, Brain Punch. The combination of Brain Punch and Mug Punch could KO me. But he optimized for a knockoff, and this is really good because that means that we secure another KO. So this Mog Punch, while doing a fair amount of damage, will definitely not be enough. And we can take on the Girder and take it out. So now we are actually 4 for 3, so you know, we're doing not necessarily that much better. As the Berserk comes in, uh, the circuitry, and yeah, I really just... I didn't want to let this thing set up with Nasty Plot, so I decided to start Sack Stoutland here. And it gets the Beast Boost with a special attack, which is good. Uh, I can bring in Galatron, and since I'm so healthy, as you guys can see, I don't necessarily fear this Pokemon at all. Now, I actually thought it would switch out, not second this Pokemon. Uh, so I go for an Ice Beam here. Had I gone for an Inert Power, I would have KO'd that Pokemon. So, jokes on me there for actually not doing what probably would have been the stronger play there. As it goes for a Simu on his circuitry, which luckily for me is the Electric Terrain. So he boosts his speed by one, but at this point it's not a threat, as the only move we can have is Dazzling Gleam, but even a plus one that shouldn't affect Curem all that much. Thunderbolt, however, does a really lot of automatic damage, but I'm able to KO the circuitry. Now, his remaining Pokemon here is Whimsicott, Cloyster, and Glisco. And at this point, Curem looks to be able to KO both of them, or all three of them, without any big issue. Whimsicott comes in, he luckily actually goes for Misty Train, which I definitely wasn't expecting, since actually I myself go for a Roost here. Here's where I start to realize that uh, I need to have the Electric Train enough to be able to secure a KO on Cloyster. Then again, if Cloyster is Sash, I've lost anyway. But if it isn't Sash, I need to have the Train enough to ensure I can KO. So with that in mind, I can actually switch out to Type of Koku, basically. This was just a way to try to break through and lure in uh, Tid to actually make a choke play and make sure that Terrain stays up because I really just need Terrain to be active for the remainder of the turn that is to be able to actually secure a KO. Um, so I go for a Volt Switch here. I definitely was feeling whether or not I should have gone for a more stronger hit there, but I don't think it would have mattered in the long run since I'm actually missing the specs after all. So I'm bringing Curran Black. Now I'm just going to go for that very, very easy Ice Beam. As um, you know, I'm I'm definitely healthy for this matchup. I should be able to do fine here. As he sadly go for the Mr. Train. I say sadly because this means that depending on his Cloyster set, I could have lost this matchup. It just depends on well, basically what Cloyster set it is. Though so I'm very sure it's a shell smashing variant. Definitely can't be anything like that. So Canada comes in with Cloyster. Um, 
So we'll go for the fusion bolt and this should do roughly 50%. Um, had it been of course in drain it would have KO'd. But he goes for shell smash and we do see here afterwards that he wasn't a focus sash set. He was actually a white herb set. Uh, what this means is that of course that if rock blasts do connect now that we will lose. If it doesn't we will win. But do connect it and drill enough into it of course it will take me out. And my last Pokemon is Tabakoku, and it's not fast enough after a Shell Smashing Cloister. So we do lose this match 2-0. I do believe we should have lost a lot more than 2-0. I think Cloister could have set up a much, much earlier than it ended up doing. But quite frankly, there really wasn't any way for me of winning uh, once his Whimsy card set the terrain. So for what is worth, did great battle, good prep on your part. You were definitely a worthy winner of this matchup. So yeah, a quick rundown, I guess, of you know, what I'm feeling, how this battle went, and what I thought I should have done differently. Uh, I think first and foremost is the way I start the battle. I'm, I'm playing very much predictable, and of course Tid is playing very predictable too, making very predictable switches to his easiest switching towards, of course, Electric Stab for my Tabakoku. And I felt that was an aspect that I was kicking myself over afterwards, because Hidden Power Eyes, Specs Hidden Power Eyes definitely KO a Gliscor. Had I done the prediction early, I would have been able to spam with Coco very early on a Fusion Ball, of course, also. And not feeling the, the U-turn from Gliscor was also, I think, a mistake with Celebi. Losing Celebi early really was very tough, because all of a sudden I really didn't deal very well with Girder, which I didn't deem as a threat, though clearly it was. And um, what more? Well, I could have predicted the nature of power, Wimsy Carter didn't do that, quite frankly, I think it's an ingenious strategy from Tid and well deserved of KO of Jarados for doing that play, I think that was really cool. While I do kick myself over that I couldn't preserve Jarados better, uh, I still think that Tid really prepped um, very good for this matchup and dealt very well with my team, so I'm glad I actually don't lose bigger here because Tid quite honestly played a lot better than me with this matchup and well, I couldn't keep up. Uh, it, that's definitely it. It's like I really didn't have a good switch in towards Genesect. I definitely didn't feel Genesect was going to be a big threat, but of course it was. I mean, download what an ability it is for that particular Pokemon. And just overall, Tid played this game a lot better than I did. And I'm a much worthier winner due to that. So I wish him all the luck in a continuous season. We are now 2 for 2, which is not bad, but definitely not great. Um, we have five more battles, and then it's whether or not we make playoff. And I'm, I'm feeling that I need a trend change. I'm gonna do that with David the D train next week. Shouldn't be any problem. Just telling you, David, if you look at this video, I'm gonna fuck you up. I'll see. That's gonna be a great battle. I, I'm looking forward to that one too. Uh, so, anyway, guys, thank you for, of course for watching, and I'll see you next week. Until then, take care. Bye.